Hey, what is up guys? Uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, today, as you might see in the title, uh, well, we're, we're going to be building a piglin farm today. It's going to be the one that's been seen in my uh, survival series. I, I realized that I did not explain that very well, so I wanted to make a video to explain how to make it better. That might be one of my favorite. It's got to. This is gonna be my favorite farm of all time. It's just. It's so satisfying to watch all those piglin, zombie piglin, of course, die. That sounds wrong, but it's true. Yeah. So um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try making this tutorial as unique as I can. Well, first off, I don't see many uh. Many many tutorials, at all, show off the circuits. I want you to be able to understand the circuits and be able to use the circuits in other builds that you may have. It's it's a good way to learn redstone through farms. Okay, so this piglin farm uh, works only on bedrock, I believe. I don't think this will work on Java due to the fact, well, y'all don't really have trident killers as an option, uh, so there's no AFK experience. Or, or yeah, you can't really AFK and get experience from it. You got to do other stuff and then nether usually that, that tends to be the better option uh for bedrock of course we got trident killers that is one of the circuits i will be showing you all today there are two versions one is a simple piston uh like a spiral piston that pushes a trident around and a version by silent whisperer which he just posted a few days ago i would recommend checking his video out about the trident killer because that is amazing I would use it in my build, but I have not actually tested tested it that much, so I don't really know how to use it. But I do want to try it one day. Okay. Anyways, let's get let's get down to teaching you guys the circuits. Okay. Number one circuit. This is the most important part of the AFK farm, especially on Bedrock. The Trident Killer. Okay. To build this, it's actually really simple. All you need to do is place four pistons in a spiraling pattern, like so. Like that. Okay. Now you want to put a torch on each one of these pistons. This is, uh, as long as you put it on that side specifically. The side next to it, where there's a block missing, that is for an observer. You should have your observer facing the torch, like so. I just realized I missed a, I forgot a whole piece of this. Uh, let's just get a lever real quick. Yep. So, uh, depending on which side is the front, let's just say that this is our front. We place the lever on the piston, like this. Well, this is like the basic concept, but you press it once, and it will do that. The reason this happens is because the lever activates both the piston and the torch, which turns the torch off, and the observer will notice. So when I flip this back on, the torch will turn back on, creating a flip uh, a circuit which constantly spins it like so. If you know, if you look at the torches, they're uh, turning off at a uh, let's see counterclockwise, and uh, that, that's how that's how the trident killer works. All you gotta do is take your trident, throw it either on the piston somewhere, just somewhere around here, anywhere in there. Flip it and well, yeah, anything. Let's just get a mob. Anything that gets spawned in here, or falls into here, will get killed by the... Not a very good example, but they start taking damage from the... Come on, okay. Like this. Let's just show it like this. There. They should eventually... You know what? A pig was a bad idea. Oh, come on! <laughs> you know, let's go with something simple. Let's just go with the zombie piglin, which we're going to be killing. The trident will be bouncing around and will kill the zombie piglin because of the fact the the piston the, the 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 trident getting pushed by the piston makes it seem as though it is falling, which does damage. So yes, number one circuit, trident killer. Okay, circuit number two, the item sorter. This is essential to an AFK farm, in my opinion, just because, well, you want your items sorted, sorted in order to just collect them easier, to create items easier, it's just, it's a lot better. 
I'd rather not have one bulk storage system, because sometimes certain items will just be too much. For example, the zombie piglins, the mob we will be farming today, drop four different items. A golden sword, whether it be enchanted or non-enchanted. A gold ingot, uh, the amount of it varies. Uh, gold nuggets, and of course, rotten flesh. We want to be able to sort those four items in, in order to just, well, uh, maximize the storage, or, well, make the storage work efficiently. Yep. Okay. To get this farm started, uh, let's, or, well, not farm, to get this circuit started, let's start with, by placing down a few chests. Let's go with three, like that. This is just one out of however many you want to put down. These are tileable, which means they can play, be placed next to each other. First off, we start off, we start with a temporary block to place a hopper into, like that. This block will be removed, so the hopper, the, the tail of the hopper should be facing air, like that. These, the tails of these hoppers should be facing the chest. The tail represents where the items will be sorted into. This is the basic design for most of it. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can show off another important bit. Okay, let us throw these hoppers down. This will be the most expensive part of a AFK farm, mostly due to the fact that this requires so many hoppers, and that's a lot of iron. One hopper is already eight pieces, no, is it three pieces of iron, or is it eight? I know it's a lot of iron. <laughs> Trust me, I've been playing Minecraft for years. Okay, so... The next part of this is we need to figure out the flow of items. If it's coming from up here, let's say, going down and going this way, we want to have a, a hopper line start from this block and go over here. This block is temporary, of course. Now, the way we start this farm is to place two blocks. One here, here, like that. That is for one circuit of this, or one tile, I guess. Let's extend this over here. Now, we can place a temporary block like that, put down our piston, get rid of that block, and place three more. Place a piece of obsidian on top, oh, of course I forgot something, a comparator. Place your comparator like so, so it is facing into this. The comparator is reading this hopper. Now take four pieces of glass like that, get four blocks, like that, I realize that this, this outline is very small compared to the actual circuit itself, but here we go. That's pretty much all you need. All you gotta do now is add redstone. Uh, the item sorter requires three items like this to be able to work the way I want it to. Or, uh, no, not three. Three redstone, I think. Yeah, Three redstone like this. Uh, now we got to take our torches and place them on, on the piston like that. Finally, all that's left to do is to... Let's just clear out this part of our inventory real quick. Grab, get yourself an anvil. I, I can find anvils, yep. Grab yourself just any random block. It doesn't matter. Get your anvil, place it down. Na put your block in. Name it whatever you want. Like, uh... Yeah. Very random. Mm -hmm. This makes it so that if this item... Uh, we we want to make it so that no item that goes into the system will stack up with this and break it. So we just take our items, put it like that. Put it like... Oh, I can definitely do this. Yep, like that. Just fill in the last four with this. Now, get the four items that you're trying to sort. Let's just go with cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, cobble deep slate, and smooth stone. What we need is 41 items in here. If you just throw all of your items, it will automatically start going down, and it will... And 41 items will be left there. Let's see. And... 41. It will stop there. Let's just throw the rest in. Okay. The reason this works is, since the comparator is reading that there is an item in here, or there's more than 41 items in... Wait. 
technically there's 45. But now that the comparator is reading that there are more than 46 items in here, it will send out a signal equivalent to the 46 items, which is about three redstone pieces, which will activate this redstone torch. Turning off this, turning off the, uh, which is powering this hopper, of course. Once it turns off that hopper, the one item that's in here gets pulled down into the hopper and gets sorted. Let's just, uh, do this. Grab ourselves a nice chest. That's not what I meant to do, but yep. Let's do that. Grab ourselves these blocks in a random order. Throw them in here. Let's just do that. Don't need that at all. Oh, I should pick that up. No. Nope. There we go. These items will get pulled into the system and get automatically sorted. Let's see, where's it getting stopped? Hold up, what did I do? Oh. Why is... Okay. Yeah, um... I threw the wrong blocks in there. It's fine. See, the items are getting sent through here and getting sorted in here. I'm still curious as to how these got in here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, these items are getting sorted anyways, like that. And that should be it. That is your items sorter. Okay, this is the third circuit of the system. This is pretty much the last thing that we really need. But, of course, there is another one after this that we could do, but it's not necessary. I'll just show that in the tutorial uh, while I'm building the piglin farm later on. So this is the automatic item dispenser. This is going to be used for our trash system. The way this works is, let's just, uh, yeah, let's have this be the front. This is a dropper. It can also be a dispenser, but it's not recommended as certain items like TNT will automatically be activated and explode. I recommend a dropper because it's cheaper. Plus, it will not do that. It will just drop the item in its item form, no matter what. This is a really simple build, I think. Take your comparator, face it into the dropper. To do that, you just get it aim away from the dropper to place it. These two, I guess, prongs are showing which direction is reading. What you gotta do next is just place a repeater in these positions. Get your redstone dust, fill in these points, and you can either just place a block like that. There we go, that's the, that's the whole circuit. The way this works is, the comparator is reading if there's an item inside the dropper. It will send a signal to both activate the dropper and get rid of the item, and sends another signal through to read into the comparator. The comparator will read, oh, whoa, lag. The comparator will read that signal, and if it's equal, it will send out another one, I think, and shoot it out, or something like that. I'm not really under, I don't really understand comparators very well, but from what I understand, that seems to be the way it works. As you can see here, it's just getting uh, all the cobblestone I threw in there is getting shot back out. It's a really simple thing. I love to use this in many of my builds. Redstone builds, of course. But yeah. That is this circuit done. Now we move on to the actual piglin farm. Well, zombie piglin farm. Okay, let's get down to building the actual farm itself. Now that we've learned all those circuits, we can uh, build this pretty easily. So first up, we want to we wanna go up and uh, build ourselves 23 by 23 portal. It doesn't matter where you build it, I like to build it up in the sky just because it, it's easier to look at. You can put it underground, you could put it in the ocean, it, it doesn't matter. Well, you can't put it in the ocean. I mean, you can, but you got to surround it with like a bubble of some sort, not air, but like, you know. Okay, let's start off with the portal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Awesome. Now, when you pillar up, I would highly recommend that you place water uh, somewhere down here just so that you have somewhere to jump back down to. I have died many times because I did not put water down and tried to water bucket and failed or something like that. Yeah, it's not safe. Or if you have feather falling boots, you should be able to survive this. So, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Now we've got to fill in the rest of the obsidian for the frames. Oops, not like that. But we uh, now should have the biggest size portal we can actually obtain. Let's get ourselves a flint and steel. Let's get rid of that lever. We don't need it for right now. And light it. The way that nether portals work to spawn a pig zombie piglin is that the zombie piglin will always spawn on the positive side of the X and Z coordinates. To activate coordinates, we go into settings, go down to world options, and turn on show coordinates. Let's light this a few times. The zombie piglin will always spawn on the positive end. Since the uh, portal is built mostly on the X axis, as we can see here, it goes, so the X axis in this case would be negative 214. Well, I mean, actually, this is kind of more of the Z axis. We're on 133. But most of the build, I guess, is sort of facing in the x-axis, in a way. I don't know how to explain it. But anyways, uh, the way it works, the one that we're looking for here is, since it's built on the z-axis, we want to go to positive z, which is in this direction. Over here is negative z. Let's like this a few times to show a zombie piglin. Like that. They will always spawn on this side. So... To remember that, let's start by building ourselves a nice water stream. Let's just build up a nice three blocks like that. Uh, let's see. We want to go seven blocks for out from here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. You can either do it like this, or... No, let's just go like this. I, I was going to suggest dropping it down by one block so that zombie piglin can fall through, but that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Since we're using water, we want to, and water has a radius of eight blocks, we want to have seven. That way it can just continue down. We only need one single water bucket. We place a temporary block here and get rid of it, and do another seven. Four, five, six, seven. And now the rest is eight. So we just come down here and go eight blocks out. Six, seven, eight. Let's fill this part in like that. Place in a few blocks like this. You don't really need to do this. These can be temporary if you want them to, but I like to make it look nice. You also don't need to use glass. I, Again, I like to make it look nice. And in my opinion, glass is just so satisfying to use on a farm. Awesome. There we go. And there. Now, ooh, I don't know why I have lava in my inventory right now, because I don't need it just yet. Let's take our water, place it down, and it should flow all the way to the very end. Like... that? Yes, there we go. Sweet. Now, since... Uh, we, the, the water system, of course, can be faced in any direction. You can have it over here, you can have it over here, it, whichever way you want, doesn't matter. But on the side that has the water source, place down a three blocks like that. Get yourself a dispenser. Put an observer facing, no, put the observer facing this way, so that the arrow is pointing towards the dispenser, and the face is on this end. Go one block to the side like that. I'll place an observer like this, so that the arrow is facing in the opposite direction. Place another block, and place a sticky piston. We place our water bucket in here, and uh, for now, let's we're testing with a lever. Okay, place your lever, it doesn't really matter, you, this is, you're going to get rid of this anyways. Just place it like this. Since the observers are here, they're uh, detecting each other and constantly sending out a signal source which will send a water stream through. This will break the nether portal, allowing us to keep resummoning the uh, zombie piglin. Let's get rid of that. Now, on this end, we want to go up by one block like that, from the bottom obsidian, like this. From here, we want to go out six blocks. Uh, wait. Six. No, that's not six. Six. We want to have a observer, or an observer, I should say, right there, facing with the arrow facing that way, and five more observers in this way, in this direction. 
This is how the area should look. Take your blocks and just surround like sur surround the observers like that. Take your uh, more blocks and just do this again. Trap doors in these areas. We need five of them. The reason we are doing it like this is because of lava. Where is... Let's just get rid of the water for now. Take your lava... Or, well, you don't really need to place it right now, but place some blocks over the trap door like that and do this again. Place the lava like so, and it will... Oh, I should not stand there. It will light the portal, as we can see here. There we go. Sweet. Okay. This will light the portal infinitely, and this will break it infinitely. Now, the way for this farm to work is you must have fire spreads on. That's because lava needs to, well, burn the trapdoors in order to light this thing. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna make our, we're not gonna make us a uh, very small and meek one portal uh, zig, ziglin, piglin, zombie piglin farm. Yeah, you know. I'm gonna make ourselves a nice three portal farm. Because I like to maximize the amount of experience you can get. So, uh, to do so, we want to have at least a five block gap between the portals. So, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. On the sixth block is where we're going to have our portal frame. That is because this is going to be where the water streams are again. And on this end is going to be another one of these. So let's see. Let's go to 23 blocks. Oops. And then let's go out another 5 blocks. 3, 4, 5. And on the 6th block, another portal. Oops. Like that. Basically, all you got to do now is build the exact same thing I built in this area over here. Just two more times. That's it. I'm going to cut to when I finish all three of these portals, so uh, see you in the next clip. Awesome. Now we are on to the on-off switch to the whole farm. Sweet. So let's just extend our little platform out here a little bit. doesn't matter how big this is. It do, it, you, really, it, you really don't need to worry about how much space is in here. I'm just going to do this just because, well, I like it. And uh, okay. So now we uh, need to make an area for the switch. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a little bit of a wall. It's just a fake wall. Make it seem like this is a room, you know. And uh, let's place our lever right here. It doesn't really matter where you place the lever, but let's just stick with that. Because, well, it's cool. So now we want to make sure that the block is uh, behind the lever. Once it's behind the lever, we can either place down a repeater or a redstone dust. I like to place down a repeater just because, well, it's cool. Now, um, I'm going to try reducing the amount, the amount of redstone you need for this build, so I'm going to use a block here. You can just use redstone there, but this is easier for me. Okay. I want to have a repeater coming up from the block on both ends. We can now remove the lever right here. That's going to start going. We want to have a... Uh, well... A redstone pulse going into a... Block which has a torch on the opposite side of it. That turns off this whole part. So all we got to do now is just hook up a bunch of... Oh, I'm dumb. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, like that. <laughs> okay, now if we turn on this thing, that whole thing gets turned off. Normally I would recommend working from that side first. So let's get a massive redstone line over there. Okay. I believe that redstone, uh... If you power redstone with, like, let's say a lever, redstone torch, or anything of the, like that, the pulse will reach a max, or uh, the length of the redstone will reach a max of 16 blocks, I believe? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
that should be the max. Okay, but in this case, we want to make this easier. So we want to go up 16 blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. We don't really need that 16 block since we will need to put a repeater. Bring our redstone line all the way up, place a repeater here, and this should be in line with something here. Yep. Looks about right. <laughs> okay. Let's just lead another redstone line all the way across so that we can get to our water. Like this. Now the way we want to do this is just, let's, let's just, actually no, let's do it like this. Let's extend our redstone lines like this. I'm doing this whole part right here just off the top of my head, kind of, just because, well, it's always fun to challenge yourself like this, you know? Let's do that. There we go. Now, we got to think of this in a specific manner. Let's say this is on. This is the on position. So we bring ourselves, if we go down, one block like this, place one torch, now it's suddenly off. Every torch we add is a different switch, so this is off. Again, off. So I'll call this one on. This one's off. Also, look how many piglin are over there. So many. Why are they dying? Did I do it, dumb? I don't think I did a dumb. But I don't know why they're dying. Okay. Um... Anyways, I guess 22 blocks might have been the better option here, but it's fine. Okay, now we just gotta do this. Just bring it down. So this one right here would be on, off, on, off. There we go. I think I did it dumb again. Oh, well, we can keep we can keep these blocks here. I don't know. I mean, it would be a little bit more expensive. Yeah, let's just think, let's keep it like this. Okay. So on, off, on, off, and then this would be on. But we, I guess we really want this to be off. I'm sorry, this is, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about this as I'm going. So let's just do this. Let's do this. Okay. Like that. Let's get rid of this line of blocks. And then let's place all of our torches. All of them go on top of the block, like that for right now. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. They should all be off. Awesome. Now we want to make it so that this bottom torch is actually on this block. Let's do that. Like that. Okay. Sweet. Now let's come on over here and change this up a little. We want to, let's place a temporary block, and just make a line of redstone, or make a line like that. Well, uh, more like that, actually. There we go. Whoops, I did not mean to break that block. There we go. Sweet. Now take yourself a repeater and just place it on these blocks right here. Get a bunch of redstone like that. I'm going to put a repeater right here, just because, and then, uh, let's see, if we do this, that, this, that, repeater, and this whole thing should be hooked up. Now if we press this button, if we press this right here, it should both turn on the farm and turn on the trident killer. Beautiful. 
I also like to have a separate button, or lever, I guess, if you want, of course, that can activate the, only the Trident Killer and the Trident Killer alone. So, to do this, I will put in a, a button, right? Or lever. Lever is the easiest option. But of course, I would recommend labeling them. If you place one right there, just do that, and repeater. Now I should only turn on the Trident Killer. This will kill whatever is inside of here and allow the items that are just sitting there to be sorted later on. And that is your whole on-off switch for this farm. Okay, now for the last part of this whole farm. The item sorting system. So the way that this part works is we want to collect the items, of course. So let's just get rid of a bunch of items in our inventory. Grab ourselves a hopper minecart. Where is it? Hopper minecart. We want to grab ourselves... Whoa. One rail. Uh, and let's see. Hoppers. Uh, what else? Where, is this? Where are the chests? Chests. Yes. Okay. So now it doesn't really matter where you put the... Oh, that's a lot of experience. Where you put the hopper minecart, but I would recommend putting it directly underneath the block where Piglin fall from. So in that case, we will... I guess it depends on where you put your ladder. Let's say we put our ladder right here. Because, well, you know, we, we like to have ladders. Ladders are fun. Let's get her. Let's just actually pull out a ladder. You, you could actually make a staircase if you wanted to, but ladders are more compact, I suppose. So from here we go three forward, or well, two forward, one, two, three, four, five blocks that way. That way. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Right here should be. Right here should be. <laughs> oh wait. I forgot the piglins drop here. Huh. Okay, let me let me redo this real quick. So, from here, from where you put the ladder, I guess, you go one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. Beautiful. Now we can place our block back and just, well, do this. Place our rail. I prefer to have the rail in this direction just because it's more simple. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, but, uh. This block right here has to be a hopper. Of course, this part can actually go in this direction as well. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Though that would be a low roof. So actually, you know, let's just stick in this direction. I'm a very indecisive person, if you can't tell. So my farms might be a little... Uh, my farm videos might be a little iffy, of course. So there's the, there's the hopper minecart. That'll collect the items that are in there and send them through. There's no items in there. Oh my gosh, so much stuff in my inventory. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's just get rid of all that stuff. Okay, sweet. So now we want to just, well, make a line of uh, hoppers. Now this, this part right here depends on how many chests you actually want. I like to have at least two chests for every item they drop, besides swords. I always want to get rid of the swords. Never, never smelt them down. It's not worth it. Not in the slightest. Because if you smelt down the sword, you will get only a single nugget, or golden nugget, back. And if you consider that you have to, um, well, get the fuel for that as well, that is really expensive. It is not a good idea. I did not mean to do that. I'm sorry. Uh, let's just get rid of that for now. I accidentally got rid of my tried. Yeah. But yeah, again with the golden swords, if you have to smelt them down, you have to get the resources to smelt, or like the fuel. And then not only that, you have to have a huge chest system just to collect all of the swords. That's not worth it. All just for a single golden nugget for each sword. Nope, I would not recommend it at all. So now, again, I like to have two chests per 
the items they drop. So basically that would be golden nuggets, golden ingots, and rotten flesh. So that's six hoppers total. Two, three, four, five, six. Well, from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get rid of those. Like that. Awesome. I guess I have to pick this up now. Did not really want to do that, but it's fine. So now we can uh, just pop on down here. And let's just place a bunch of chests. I'll make a nice little platform just because I don't like it looking ugly. You can. This part is customizable to you as well. You can make it as you can have make it have as many chests as you want, as tall as you want. It, it all depends on you. So now, uh, let's see. So rotten flesh. I'd like to have three chests of that. You can always have more though. More rotten flesh. Oh wait, it can't go up that high. Sorry. There we go. This is gold ink nuggets, and these will be gold. Uh, Actually, you know what? I'm going to have three chests for Rotten Flesh, two for Golden Nuggets, and one for Gold Ingots. Again, customizable. But I like to have a lot of Rotten Flesh in case I want to trade with the Clerics. Of course, you can always make it more Gold Nuggets and just have two for Rotten Flesh, but again, it's up to preference. There we go. So now we just build our simple little uh, item sorting, sorting system right here. Okay. Again, we want to... Oh, wait, I forgot to place the hoppers. Whoops. Not like that. There we go. There's our hopper system. Take uh, our blocks, place it like that. There we go. Sweet. We can get rid of these now. We've got to get ourselves our piston, our obsidian, a torch, a comparator, and some glass. Sweet. So now for this part again, just pistons, like that. That's clearly not what you're supposed to do. That. By the way, this is another good reason as to why I like to, I want to put my circuits at the very beginning. I'm not very good at explaining things, so this is uh, this is very bad. I like to just build. Let's just get all of our redstone in. There we go. And our sorting system is... Uh -oh. Again, I almost forgot the torches. That would have been bad. There we go. I'm just going to continue the ladder downward. Again, this, sort, this, this chest system can be on this side as well. The ladder can be anywhere you want it to be, really. It's all up to you. I'm just showing you guys the basic concept of the farm. So, once again, we can remove these temporary blocks. Fill them up with our named uh, named block drop, or stopper, I guess. That's the best way I can describe it. Just whatever named item that we want. You can even have it be rotten flesh that's named if you want it to be. There we go. Now we can just, uh, here, I'll go in here, just grab, oops, okay, I already have enough rotten flesh, let's come over here, grab ourselves some gold nuggets, that's enough, and some gold ingots. Rotten flesh, rotten flesh, I just realized I just went against what I just said, I'm just going to make it two for each, there we go, that's fine, that's fine, I can live with that. There we go, see? Now this whole system should be done for at least the sorting. Now we want to get ourselves a trash system to get rid of the swords and overflow. Because we do not want overflow. There's going to be a lot of rotten flesh that you're not going to collect. So now we want to just extend this by at least one block, I'd say. That's just... I need that, actually. Don't need that. Okay, now we can grab ourselves a dropper, a bucket of lava, um, more hoppers, uh, maybe some glass, just so we can watch the whole thing happen. I almost forgot the repeaters. 
Yep, okay. So now we just do this. That. Uh. Oh, wait, actually, we don't need that block. Dropper. Nope. Dropper facing downward. Grab yourself some blocks like this. Okay. So the way, the way I'm building this actually could get, um, could mess up this redstone right here. So you know what? We're going to build it in the other direction, like right here. Like this. So again, comparator, repeater, repeater, repeater. You could also, you could also have this be the other way around if you want it to be. So block to activate the dropper, to drop the items in. Uh, okay, let's just do this. The aesthetics of this build really don't matter, it's just up to you. You can design it the way you want. It is your design now. Or, it's your farm now. That's what I meant. <laughs> let's just fill this part in real quick. Place a piece of glass, and lava. There we go. Now, any item that's not... Um, well, one of the items that are sorted or overflow will get sent to here and be destroyed. Now, for maximum efficiency for this farm, you want to grab yourself a sword. I'm just going to say netherite sword, because... Well, actually, no, you know, I can, I'm just going to pull out a wooden sword. Any sword works. Get yourself... Where is it? You want to get yourself looting three. You can get this by either enchanting at level 30 or through books. Any any form of looting works, but looting 3 is the best, so I would recommend using that. Just put looting 3 on your swords. Beautiful. Turn on your farm. Turn on your farm, I said. There we go. Let's pop into survival. And uh, let's watch the levels as they come in. We can watch as the piglin fall as well. There's so many piglin. Oh, it's beautiful. It brings joy to my face. No, no tears to my eyes, just joy to my face. This is one of the fastest exper experience farms you can get on Bedrock. Yep. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it for this farm. Let me just go back into creative real quick and uh, from what we have, let's go check out the, well, this. Let me just take out this stuff actually. <laughs> I just realized that this is interfering with the, oh, okay, that was more than I remembered, so. Let's watch this, let's watch this. The amount of rotten flesh goes up really quickly. The amount of gold nuggets increases quickly as well. Yeah, this, let's see if we can watch the sword get burnt. There we go. That has this whole farm working. I'll just do a quick fly around to... Oh my goodness, that's a lot of piglin. By the way, if you have a nether portal anywhere near here, um, there is a chance that the piglin will go through the nether and then uh, still remember the fact that you were killing them with a the trident killer. And they will want to, um, well, kill you as well. I would highly recommend that you, uh... Oh, how did he get up there? Okay. Let's just place a block like that. I would highly recommend that you take the coordinates of this portal right here. Whatever the coordinates of this portal are, divide that by 8, and then go into the nether and place another nether portal there. It could just be a normal, a standard, um... 4 by... Let's see. 5. Yep, it could be standard one of these portals. And this will make it so if any of those piglin go into the nether, they will respawn at this portal. But to make sure that they don't kill you again, just sort of make a bit of a box. So that they, if they walk out on one side, they will sort of just fall into a hole like this. But of course, do this in the nether. And just make a bit of a box, and nothing will harm you. There we go! Wonderful. That's all you gotta do. And, uh, well, that's this farm done. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I hope this is very useful to you. It's so good for experience. It's 
You saw how many mobs there were. Let's turn this thing on again. One more time. Y'all see how good this, this farm is? Look, look at this. Already a ton of piglin. This is a lot of experience right here. Oh my gosh. The center portal is just pumping out piglin. Oh, so is the left one. Oh yeah. There we go, that's beautiful. If if the mob farm really works this efficiently though, it's just it's beautiful. Oh man. Anyways. That will do it for today's episode or well, today's tutorial. I uh, hope this is useful to you and uh, well if you have any comments, suggestions, uh, even in the comments, I'll attempt to help you. By the way, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, the original farm design that I based this off of was from JC Place. And then I took some uh, bits and bobs that I learned from people like Silent Whisperer, such as this uh, sorting system right here, which was based off of the impulse sorting system. Why not? Yeah. Uh, everything else, the, the main things I designed were just putting in the circuits themselves, making the on off switch, and uh, that's pretty much it. And well, of course, this thing too, but yeah. By the way, if you want to use a button instead, one thing you can do is use a T flip flop. You may be wondering, what a, what is a T flip flop? Let me come over here. I have built a few. Oh, well, I've built a bit of a test over here. Where is it? Right about... Here. No. Uh... Here. No. Wait. Is it this? Oh, it is this. No, it's not. <laughs> Where did I put it? You know, I can just build it right now. It's really simple. We need a dispenser, a comparator, redstone, a stair, or you don't, you don't really need this, but I like to have it. And uh, let's just come over here. And the way the T flip flop works is that if you are to place down the dispenser, like so, you place down a stair. Like this. I almost forgot the water. Put the water into here. Come on out. Place a comparator here. And the comparator will read out a signal strength of 3. Which means that... Let's just use sticky pistons, because why well, not? These get activated. This one is also activated. Let me just... No, wait, that's... Okay. Yeah, it sends out a signal strength of 3, which means that if I were to take a repeater, this one will always send out a full signal. This one will send out a full signal. This one will send out a full signal, but this one will not. Well, I guess it's a signal sense strength of 2. But the moment you activate the uh, dispenser, and the water gets pumped out, the signal strength only goes down to 1, which means this one becomes full, but then this one doesn't. Which means you just have to make a three long redstone... Let me just do this again. Oh no. Make it too long, I mean. Too long, and, uh, well, suddenly you have a T flip-flop right here. The way that this would work is if you were to put it up in your system, uh, right around, I'm blind, over here. You can replace both of these with a with one of those, and with the repeater being farther apart, you can customize this part to just have a button. That's hard to explain for me, but I'm sorry. I'm running out of video time. Or actually, I've, I did run out of video time. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you tune into whatever video I make next. Um... Hopefully, it might be another farm. Who knows? Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, like if you liked it. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content and want to see more. And uh, hit the little bell if you, uh, well, want to know exactly when I post. That's not creepy at all.
It's normal. <laughs> I, 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 I know when uh, the people I am subscribed to post a video. So if you're subscribed to me, and you want to see my next video, and you want to see it first, have notifications on. Because why not? <laughs> Thank you for watching.